Hey, welcome back. It's a terrific Tuesday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV, and a terrific day it is. Uh, every day we're here in the Newsmax headquarters studio from 12 to 2 Eastern, um, bringing you all the real talk, the real guests, the people that know where the rubber meets the road. Uh, we're coming to you live as we do every day from the Question Tequila Studios. And uh, down at the New York Stock Exchange, the Dow down about 26 points, um, but holding its own right here at the 26,000 level. Uh, I'd like to see a little support and stabilization here going into the end of the summer. So I think you're safe um, with your portfolio. Don't get crazy. But uh, we're not safe uh, by the minute here in New York and across the country with the deterioration of respect for NYPD officers and public safety officers across our great nation. And uh, one of the guys who's doing something about that joins us today. Joe Imperatrice joins us. Joe, you're the founder of Blue Lives Matter. You're an advocacy group to keep respect and keep the rights of police at the forefront. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about Blue Lives Matter. So back in 2014, with the deaths of Ramos and Lou, um, we were at Rafael Ramos's wake and funeral, and uh, we saw officers from all over the world come to support one of the largest police departments in the world. They make Hollywood movies about us. But afterwards, everyone goes home and goes their own separate ways. So we came up with these wristbands. So every time you wore them, you could look down and be reminded of an officer that was killed in the line of duty and keep their legacy alive. But over the past five years, we've raised over a million dollars. We've helped officers all over the nation. And uh, it's my responsibility to not only stand up for the officers uh, that are white shields or basic patrol officers, but all the way up to somebody like uh, Commissioner O'Neill, like the police commissioner. You think the commissioner had political pressure to do what he did? Or is this an arbitrary action by him? Listen, uh, Commissioner James O'Neill is such an incredible human being. There's so many stories I could tell you and seeing the genuine person he is. And uh, that wasn't a decision he wanted to make. And if you listen to his speech, telling uh, a family that your loved one was killed is probably the most difficult. And this is probably right up there, right under it. Um, you know, it's really difficult. And I've seen some headlines today around the nation, what they're trying to do to handcuff police officers more and more. They want to put out almost like stop question at first in different states just for pointing your firearm at somebody. Um, they want to change reasonable, the word reasonable, to when you could use deadly physical force. And uh, it's making the job for a police officer much harder and it's going to end up with officers being hurt and officers getting killed. Joe, we're particularly eager to have you on today because even prior to Commissioner O'Neill's decision, you organized a rally in Staten Island where this Eric Garner incident took place um, in support of Daniel Pantaleo. Um, tell me why you were, pro you, what motivated you to organize that rally? Why were you supporting Pantaleo? And then give me your reaction to yesterday's news. Danny's been a really close friend of mine, his family has, uh, for almost 20 years. And every time you turn on the news, you see one side yelling and screaming about something that isn't always the reality of what happened. Uh, you see his group shutting down the FDR. You see, you see something like Zuccotti Park. And uh, the quiet major majority, the silent majority, is always behind the scenes. So this was something to let the world know, to let New York know that there's a lot more good, law-abiding citizens that stand behind the police, um, that do support Danny, do support the work you do every day, because you can hear it all the time, morale is at an all-time low. But when you see somebody that's supporting you and see groups of people come out like that, it gives you a reason to go out there and continue to do your job to the best of your ability. And so tell me your reaction when you saw Commissioner O'Neill's announcement yesterday. I don't think anybody in their heart really felt that it was going to go that way. You know, you have hope. You always have the rumors going on. Um, it's definitely a hit at trying to riddle what the New York City Police Department has done for years. But we have to remember the most important thing is you put on that uniform for a reason. For the officers that have been killed in the line of duty that weren't able to finish their tour. Um, and we're always going to go out there. We're always going to help the people that need it most. But the main thing is to make sure your partner, the person to the left and right of you, always goes home, goes back to their family. And that's the most important thing we got to worry about right now. Joe, in, uh, in national news, uh, Bill de Blasio, our mayor, of course, as you know, is missing in action in New York. Um, we're on autopilot here. We don't basically don't have a mayor. Um, but he did have his administration drop somewhere around $800 million <coughs> into his wife Shirlene's account to run a mental health program and build a mental health program. We see a massive uptick uh, of late in uh, police officer suicides. And uh, your organization, along with uh, New York City Councilman Joe Borelli, uh, wanted to get out in front of that get the mayor's wife in the Thrive NYC um, to partner up and invite cops and help them understand the issues and, and maybe help with their mental health. 
And then um, when Thrive heard that your organization, Blue Lives Matter, was going to be participating, they pulled back and got out of the, the, the med so the money for mental health is for Sherlane, but it's not for cops. I, I got into a, you know, a heated debate earlier being on a Joe Piscopo show, and I don't normally lose my cool. But to hear someone like the mayor called Councilman Joe Borelli a liar, um, that upset me because that was completely false. When we needed it most, our officers are committing suicide by their own hands at a record high right now. And to use a program that was already under siege to try to partner up with the city and to have somebody in that office turn around just because they saw their name was despicable and was disgusting. And I said it earlier, if anybody looked up Blue Lives Matter NYC and saw what we've done over the last five years, we've done more than any other so-called activist organization out there helping cops nationwide. And to pull out like that was, it, it upset me. And to have the mayor go on live TV and say, well, if Joe Borelli called me up, I would stop everything I was doing and made sure it happened. That's nonsense, because that's like the police commissioner saying, Joe, I'm, I'm running 36,000 cops. Call me whenever, and I'll make sure that no matter how small it is, I'll stop what I'm doing. That's not the truth. And to he, go up there and lie in front of people is disgusting. And he, he you know, if Joe did try to call him, um, he was at the Iowa State Fair eating cotton candy. So I don't know that he would be answering a Republican city councilman's call um, while he's wasting everybody's time and money out there on the campaign trail. But tell us, you say in the last five years you guys have done more than you know many other public organizations. Tell our audience some of the things you guys do. I know you hold rallies like you know in support of Danny uh, Pantaleo and stuff. But what what are you, what are the mission and goals of Blue Lives Matter? One of the main things I wanted to do, especially in 2014, is. You saw the rhetoric every single day on the front page of the paper. Officers were villainized, and we wanted to come out and show the world that officers, even off-duty, are doing positive things. So we wanted to do something along the lines of Make-A-Wish Foundation Extreme Home Makeovers for law enforcement. And just two weeks ago, um, you know, it upsets me a little bit, but uh, we had this little girl named Abigail. She was sworn in as a police chief of Freeport, Texas. And she's the sweetest thing ever, and all she ever wanted to do was be a police officer. She's actually a sworn police officer, and uh, she has terminal cancer. And we flew, flew her and her family out. We joined with the Port Authority. We joined with the MTA, the NYPD, and put on a show like no one has ever seen before for this little girl to understand that with all the nonsense going on, something like that is the most important thing ever. We flew into Georgia for a police officer that was diagnosed with uh, stomach cancer. And we flew him out to Jamaica in between his, his last chemo session and his surgery to show him that people are still thinking of him. We've raised $50,000 for Detective Simons and $20,000 for Minnesota's Familia. We constantly go out there and show people that not everything you see is factual, that a lot of it is just made up, and uh, we're gonna continue to do it, and I'm proud of where we are. Joe, uh, let me ask you the, um, the feeling of alienation that this could lead to among police officers because they feel like they can't really be police officers anymore. Do you think that could lead to less proactive policing and maybe even an uptick in crime? I think I'm glad you said that because right before I got here, there's a video from within the last couple days of several plainclothes officers stopping an individual, telling him to put his hands behind his back. They start wrestling with him, and then they suddenly back off as if they're in. A, they're stunned into, wow, we, we're afraid to take him to the ground. What do we do next? And I've said it over and over again. The second you start pausing, the second you start thinking about what your next move is, is when you're probably going to get hurt. And worst mm. case scenario, someone's going to have the upper hand, you can get killed. And all these politicians coming out there, handcuffing the cops, playing the game of confusing the officers and telling them when to do their job is becoming very dangerous. And we do not, especially in New York City, need another incident like Ramos and Lou to happen. That's for sure. It's, um, it's, uh, you're doing God's work, in my view. I want to thank you uh, for your service to the NYPD. You were a sergeant in the NYPD. And uh, like you said, there's a silent majority out there who's shaking their heads constantly. And those are the people that we're trying to talk to here on Newsmax to raise their voice just a little bit. And taxpayer money is supposed to go into public safety. That's what one of the things that we expect from our leaders. Um, and I don't think our leadership here in New York and across the country is doing everything they can to respect the men in blue like they deserve. I want to thank you for your work, Joe. Thank if you guys are doing any initiatives that you need to promote, you let us know. You go check out Blue Lives Matter and all the great things they're doing for cops. And we will take a quick break and come back to you right after this. You're watching Liquid Lunch.